This year's American Association of Adonis Meeting took place this spring under the hot Phoenix sun in the state of Arizona. Phoenix is a dry city in the middle of the desert, but during these four days at the end of April, the Phoenix Convention Hall was home to about 4,000 endodontists and endo enthusiasts trying to learn what's new and come out and meet old friends and colleagues after two years of isolation. While the attendance was generally lower than usual due to the simultaneous broadcasting of the meeting and also many people still staying home out of fears of the pandemic, this year was particularly buzzing as it was the first in-person meeting after this long and never-ending pandemic. Everyone seemed hug-deprived, craving that personal touch and finally seeing each other face to face. You could feel the energy in the air. We all needed this meeting, and for those of you who missed attending in person, you really missed out on a great opportunity to come out of your pandemic shell and enjoy the normal life once again. There was a great speaker lineup with a lot of interesting talks. After giving three talks at the last meeting myself, I enjoyed stepping away from a presenter role and just enjoy the meeting this time. I got to meet so many of you who were so kind to stop me in the hallways to say hi and how you enjoy the videos I make for you guys. Love this guy. That alone was worth the entire trip for me. I also went to a number of great lectures by excellent speakers. I went to a talk on regeneration and revascularization, resorptive defects, management of case failures by Dr. Silver and cellular bases and pathogenesis of endodontic disease by Dr. Diogenes and the industrious group at the University of San Antonio. Dr. Adam Azim's surgical talk was also great, and I also attended a presentation by Dr. He on the topic of updates on bioceramics. Now, since this topic has been requested frequently by many of you guys on this channel, I sat down with Dr. He after her presentation to talk about a couple of her slides detailing the composition of various bioceramic cements currently on the market and what they mean to us. Recently, there are a lot of new premixed bioceramic uh, sealers that just came onto the market and definitely um, created some excitement and some confusion because there's so little information on these new products other than the marketing uh, materials. So um, if you look at the material safety data sheets on these new products, you'd say, you'll see that the composition of these new materials is really very different from that of BC. And uh, you can see they have different ingredients, but one thing they all have in common is they all do have calcium silicates. But when you look at the um, actual amount of calcium silicates in these materials, you see they're really very different. When you look at endo sequence BC, it contains up to 50% of calcium silicates. That's definitely the highest among all the available bioceramic sealers on the market. And when you look at new sealer flow, it contains up to 35% of calcium silicates, still a pretty decent amount. But when you look at H plus bioceramic, which is the new product from Densply, you may be surprised to see it contains only less than 15% of cal uh, calcium silicate, so which is much lower um, than BC. And the bulk of the material is actually zirconium dioxide, which is the radio pacifier. So um, the material may look beautiful on the radiographs, but this may be at the expense of losing some bio activity. And when you look at dye root bio, um, the calcium silicate is actually only less than 5%. So again, the calcium silicate is so important for the bioactivity of these materials. And you can see, um, although all these materials um, have calcium silicates, but the amount varies greatly from one product to the other. So we really cannot make the assumption that they all have the same levels of bioactivity. I also got a chance to speak to people about their views on endo and its future. I was interested in knowing whether endodontists would recommend endo to their own kids if they were interested in the specialty. So definitely I would encourage my kids to go to endo. Endo's been good to me. 
and it's a great specialty and booming. I think the creative aspects of doing what we do and how we restore teeth, there is a creative aspect to it, which kind of um, tests your ability to think out the box sometimes. So that's good, it keeps you challenged in that area. It is hard on your body. My biggest concern is how the future of uh, the payout will be, especially with corporate taking over. The private solo practitioners moving more and more out of the wayside. It's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. If I had kids, I would definitely would want them to do whatever their greatest passion is and what they really want to do in their life. But endo would be a good choice. An exciting and honorable profession. And if I had children, I would still encourage them to do it as long as it made financial sense. It's difficult to specialize when you're six, seven hundred thousand dollars in loan. It is a good part of this practice of dentistry. It is a long road, so people have to be very committed to it and you have to watch your finances. You can get somebody to sponsor you, like military or something like that. It's a very small commitment, I think, compared to ending up with lots of yes, heavy right debt. Here. So, But pending that, I, I would definitely encourage Yes. In Korea, the price is very low, so it's not very fair when you compare the implant coding and root canal treatment. So, but if they are growing in the U.S. here, I do encourage you, you should to be an endodontist. It's very good job to save the natural tools, something like that. So implant, no. Root canal, good. In U.S. Not in Korea, <laughs> unfortunately. I think in my job at Harvard, I had a privilege to guide many, many youngsters and choose this specialty. Until today, I think they own a great gratitude for their choice. None of them really regret, because the privilege for us as an Atlantis is more than, some people think it's a financial revenue or those. It's much more than that. It's an opportunity we are able to help people and to connect with the people and then make people surrounding us better. And that's a blessing. And this is a specialty with the front lines doing that. Yes. As you can see, while the international picture is difficult due to the lower compensation rates for this procedure, the view in the US as a whole is cautiously optimistic while considering the crushing costs of education and student loans. Speaking of student loans, alumni parties are always a pinnacle of the annual meeting where you get to see faculty and classmates that you spent your formative years of your life with and get to share and recount those memorable experiences once again. For the faculty, it's always a pleasure to reconnect with our graduates after they've left. Now for me personally, like for all teachers, it's a special privilege to teach and it's always great to see the fruits of our labor in the form of happy and successful former graduates. But here at the end, I can speak for myself that I've gotten lazy over the past two years. It's always a lot easier to just sit home and watch a Zoom presentation or attend a virtual meeting, but it's never going to be as much engaging as being in person and seeing people in flesh and blood. This is what our annual meeting is all about. It's not a chance to just travel somewhere to grab some CE credits. It's really about the collegiality. It's about being together. It's about having drinks together and sharing our common ground. It's about the gripes and the complaints and the love and the conversation. It's about being a part of this wonderful community. So this was a great meeting with a lot of great opportunities to learn and to have fun. So when the time comes next year, let's forget about these virtual attendances and remote access login with different kinds of passwords. Let's not be lazy and fall into our comfort zone. Let's all plan to meet in person. At this meeting, what I learned in human terms far outweighs what I learned on the technical and scientific term. I learned that the toll of this pandemic has been really much harder on all of us than we're willing to admit. But most importantly, the pandemic has been an experience that we should just learn something from and move on. It's time to get back to our humanity, to our real connections, to understanding our individual risk and reward ratio. And considering the risks after vaccination, I think it's really time to just get back to normal. So next year, the meeting is going to be in the great city of Chicago. Whether you are an enthusiast, an endo resident, a dentist, or a dental student, or an endo enthusiast itself, let's just 
make a pact right now. Let's plan to attend in person and be part of this community, which is beyond healthcare and root canals, but about our humanity and the need for personal touch. Let's all get back to normal. I'm Ali Nase, and I'll see you in Chicago. Volvamos a la normalidad. Volvamos a la normalidad ya. Let's, Let's get, get back, back to normal. Zurich to normalize. Cheers. Let's get back to normal. Let's get back to normal. Let's go. Let's get back to normal. I'll see you in Chicago. Let's get back to normal. 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 Let's get down, let's get down to normal. Let's get back to normal. Enough already. Well, let's get back to normal. You know, these are not both lying, really. They really aren't. No. Once we're Norman. Let's get back to Norman. Let's get back to Norman. Let's get back to Norman. Awesome.